Hi, my name is Bruce Berry with Pro Sport Fisher, and today we're looking at some tube fly systems. I'm down here at the Caddis Fly Shop, and we're going to put together kind of a variation on George Cook's popsicle. So, what I'm going to do is start with a Pro Tube product, and I take the flexi needle, place it in my vise. That's a 110 millimeter needle. You can custom cut the back end if you don't like the length. You can grab it by the front of the jaws, however, you want to put it in the vise and secure it. This is taper, so this is a, a micro tube. The way it's tapered, you just give it a little push on it. Once it stops, you're good. I put the hook guide on first. That's going to hold my hook. It's a tapered silicone uh, piece, which is kind of acts as our junction tube. It comes in seven different colors, three different sizes. This is a size large. It's for steelhead flies. Okay, the next maneuver I'm going to make is I'm going to put a little weight on this fly. This is called a Pro Flexi weight. That's 15 millimeters. And then we all love marabou for soft tail outs, boulder, boulder fields and that kind of stuff. And I want to fish this in a little faster current, so I want to prop it. And to prop this fly, I'm going to push on a Pro Soft Sonic Disc in medium. And that just kind of replaces the need for chenille and schloppen or putting some kind of fox in a dubbing loop or anything like that's going to create float to the fly. So I've got weight to break the surface tension. I've got something that's going to prop the material. And from here, we're going to put thread on and start tying the fly. Um, marabou is something that I've always liked, but you know, in cold weather, marabou can be tough. This is a Arctic marble fox. You can use a fin raccoon. You can use temple dog. So what I'm going to do is just remove those guard hairs real quickly and get to the under fur. I just take a flea comb, put it in the butts, remove the guard hairs. And I'm actually going to use those in the fly. So we'll just set the guard hairs away. And this is going to be. The variation on the popsicle and that I'm just using the under fur and that's going to be something that's really durable casting fishing cold weather it's not going to break apart it's going to give you that nice movement that marabou is, is known for so the first thing I'm going to do for this fly is take some of that guard hair and I don't really stack it or do much with it maybe pull out a couple of shorties lay that on there and I want this to be a little bit longer than the than the fly. So like marabou, when it, you know, if you get materials that are all the same length, they get wet and clump. So this is going to be something that's a little bit longer than the rest of the fly. Place that on top, secure it with a few wraps, put my finger in there, put a little pressure on it, and that's just going to splay those fibers. That's going to keep them working in the current for me. Put a couple locking wraps on there. So to work this marble fox into the fly, or fin raccoon body fur. I want to make a dubbing loop. This is a new tool I just picked up down here. So we create our dubbing loop. Put a couple wraps on that to secure everything. Okay, and then what I want to do real quickly is I'm just going to take and run my comb through that fur and straighten everything out and grab anything that's loose or short. And that kind of flares the fur. For you guys that are a little bit more advanced than me, the Petajon tools I've seen the guys use down here. It's a great way to get this set and prepped and ready. Okay, so the, one of the keys with this maneuver is making sure that the hair is 90 degrees to the dubbing loop. That's going to keep it from binding on itself. And I just prep that so I get the length that I want. And once we're set, splay it a little bit. And we're going to spin it. Put a little tension on there, maybe just a little bit more spin. That should be good. And with a dubbing teaser or a flea comb, however you like to use, you want to pick that stuff back out so you get your length. Now we're just going to wrap that like marabou. Now you had that slightly longer on one side by design. Um, yeah, I try not to keep it really consistent for length, so that when the stuff goes on the on the tube, I'd like some very, you know, the length to be varied in the back, so that when it gets wet, it doesn't just stick together and clump. Gotcha. That's another reason why I put the guard hairs in a little bit long. So if we can get those materials in there and keep them from all being the same length, you'll get better movement and and all water water speeds that steelhead are going to sit in. I think kind of one of those things where maybe when there's not steelhead around we talk about what kind of fly we're fishing and when steelhead are around we talk about how many we caught but 
I think good flies are designed well. They cast easy. They wiggle good in all the currents. And like this fly is going to be a durable fly, which is nice as well. And it's a fairly easy fly to tie. Okay, so once we have that, our synthetic marabou wrapped, I just want to run the comb through it and make sure that nothing bound so it can uh, fish nice and full. And this is something where I could probably start finishing the fly right now. It's a little sparse. You know, it's just before Thanksgiving, winter fish are coming, and I want that fly to be a little bit more full. So I'm going to repeat that first step and fly. So now you can see where we're at right now. We have the guard hairs tied in first. Then we've spun a couple of pieces of that under fur and the chassis or the underbody of the fly there's weight and that little disc is going to help prop everything so it doesn't pin flat in the current it's going to wiggle now i just finished that with a couple colors of slop and a little bit of flash and for the flash i like using this i believe this is a cascade crest product it's that crinkly mirrored type of flash i'm going to tie these kind of up high like cheeks It's a lateral scale, lateral both, scale both cascade flash, yeah. and hairline. So, excellent stuff. I think that just a couple pieces goes a long way. In it. Okay, so now the slopping seems to be another durable material. This is going to add a little bit of contrast. It's also going to take some of the force of the water, so it allows this underfur that we've put in there to move. Okay, so I tie that in tip first. Run the scissors down the stem a little bit, and we'll put. Three, maybe four spins of purple. We'll add a little black on top of that to finish it up. But there we go, everything's coming together. I think that was two turns. There's maybe three. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do this is a new product from Pro Tube, Pro Sport Fisher, and it's called the Pro Jungle Cock HD. And these guys come, like this is a size small, 60 in a pack, it's a UV ink, they're lacquered, they're durable, and they're pre-cut, so all you have to do is clip the bottom and the top out, and you're ready to tie with a piece of jungle cock. And these compress to the tubes really nicely, they're very easy to put on, they're durable, and they have a nice finish to the fly, finish look is good. Make sure we're even. That looks good. So there's little nubs left. And for that I just like a nice sharp flexible razor blade. I'm going to get in there and trim those. Just like that. A couple more wraps and a whip finish. And here's kind of an important key for finishing tubes that I see you guys kind of run into problems with now and again. So once we're done, I've got that junction tube that's going to hold my hook. Everything's ready to go. The fly's tied. I slide everything off. And we want to finish the fly and get rid of that long nose on there. And there's a couple ways you can do this. One is to leave a little bit of nose, and you can slide cones on for additional weight as needed. I like to just cut them short and, and finish burn, burnishing them. So the key with these are is a lot of guys will tie a nice fly and they don't want to mess up their fly so they cut it long and try to burn a quarter inch of plastic or an eighth inch of plastic and you end up closing the hole it just you know sometimes the plastic will catch on fire turns into a mess I think the key with these is just get in there close and cut that so that there's maybe a millimeter or so of that tube left hold the tube vertical and then just bring the heat source right down to it and all we're going to do is roll the lip and done maybe one more little spot but that is a nice clean burn if you can get in there and it's finished nicely so all we have to do now is slide that fly on the tippet tie on a clinch knot or whatever knot you like with a straight eye hook pull that in the back and you're going fishing 